Welcome back. This time I'm going to show you some Python programming and this uh, topic is about threading and how you can write two classes each of which will use a different thread and they will communicate via a shared object. So let's get to it. First I'm going to import the necessary modules which will be needed to run this Python script. The first module is the threading, the second one is the time, the third is the random, and the fourth is the queue. After that, I'm going to define my producer class. This producer class is going to have an init function, which will have a self variable. And this will be the product, which can be of mail for hammer cabbage, whatever you would like. This is just a demonstration. So the self next going to be zero and there will be needed a run function which will receive the self reference and a global variable which is going to be called q and I'm going to say that while the time clock is less than 10 I will check if my next is less than the time clock. And I'm going to use the run range function, which will pick an element from the range of the product array and assign it to the f, f uh, variable. This means that I'm going to choose one of these items to be served or created or produced or whatever you can imagine. And I'm going to say that it should be put to the queue and I should say to the console that I did the f element which is a random element and after that I'm going to say <sighs> that I'm going to assign a random value for the next time I'm going to produce an element so this will create some kind of variation and the next one is the Consumer. This is also going to have an init function and the next property, which is going to be zero. I'm going to define a run function, which will also define this queue variable. And basically, they use the same Y function with a little bit of modification. So they are picking items every 10 seconds. Not 10 seconds, sorry. So I'm going to say that while the time that clock is less than 10 then I'm going to check if the next time is less than the time that clock and if there is anything to remove from the queue because if the queue is empty 
then I cannot remove anything. So it sh it would throw an error here that there is nothing to remove. Apart from that, I'm going to say that the get function should be called, which will get an element from the queue. And after that, I'm going to remove that queue. Sorry. So I'm going to remove that line because we are going to remove from the queue and print that the removing is happening and then the next should be a random number also. So this should work and I will say if the name equals main then I should create a queue which is a queue, queue with 10 elements. I'm going to have a producer and a consumer and I'm going to call the run function of those classes and assign a thread to each of them. So No. Okay. So let's save it. And grab a console. such attribute as Q. All right, then this list has no such attribute as a random range. Because I have made a mistake. This should reference an element of the product array and the round range belongs to the random function. Okay, so this is how you can try to debug if you mess up the code. So basically the first error message told me that the module Q has no attribute Q. I have came across this issue before and for example if you have python 3.x or something the q model is written with lower case q but if you have 2.x python the q model is written with upper case q and yeah but the property or attribute of this q model is every time written with upper case q so this should work. You only have to watch out for the what you only. And the second issue was that I have forgot to put this part of the source code into square brackets. This part should reference and, yeah, and the random was missing also. So this part should reference an element of this product array which will be produced by the producer. 
So let's see. Oh, something's happening. Well, not the way it's supposed to happen because I have forgot to start my consumer thread. Oh, this is a good example. And because of that, my console is frozen also. So what I'm going to do now is start another one. Go to the desktop. And the other problem was that there was nothing shown. So, yeah, the other problem was that the curly brackets were missing because I used a format function, which is a universal format function when you are printing out stuff. And here it was also missing. So, let's try this again. Ole, it's working. So what is happening here? As you can see, we can see the lines. This program is running on two threads, which means that one thread it comes from the producers and one thread comes from the consumers. And yeah, the time clock reached 10 and it stopped so basically it was only just for 10 seconds but if I want it it could run forever <coughs> so what happens when you would like to create another consumer all you have to do is copy the consumer thread and say that you should yeah, okay. So now that run logs. I cannot explain and script at the same time. But yeah. See you what start. Okay. So this should result in two consumer threads and one producer thread, so the queue will be exhausted before the 10 second ends, if this runs at all. And what can we do to show that the consumers are waiting for product? We could say that we check, yeah, we go to the consumer class definition and and we could go here with the acid or we could restructure the logic of this, whichever suits our purpose, because in this case we check, oh, let's go with this, so, else if, q empty, then, consumer is waiting for product, all right. If I run this again, I should see that line appearing. Yeah. So, basically our producer is slower than the consumers and the queue is mostly empty. And I could... Yeah, why not? So. And G should be called 
Phillips. Okay, so it's better, but we still have some waiting. What we could do is that we say we monitor the size of the cube and we don't let the consumer start consuming in case the queue is empty or we could just check the size of the queue queue size yeah this is the first one then Q is what I would like to print. Yeah, so let me check it. This is how I script usually. So how to print size of Q Python and the version. <coughs> Class Q priority fuck. Okay, so it's easy because all I have to do is Q point Q size. supposed to work. So basically yeah and you can see the size of the cube as it goes up or down and yeah so that's all I wanted to show you. If you would like you can customize it or you can do whatever you would like with the script because I'm going to make it publicly available in the video description. You can find the download below, link below and uh, yeah if you liked it subscribe for more. Bye!